All right, if there are two strengths that I have in climbing that I feel comfortable giving advice on, it's overhung routes and strength training. Roll the montage. What's going on everyone? If you're new here, my name is Mike and I mostly talk about my climbing progress and strength training around climbing. Today I want to talk about overhang climbing. Climbing overhung routes is quite challenging because it demands a lot of strength, skill, and endurance. Overhung routes are the ones that tilt forward, making it difficult because it puts extra stress on your grip and your arms. So I'm going to go over four training techniques to help you improve your overhung abilities, starting with working on overhung routes first and with high repetition. So improving your climbing abilities on overhung routes requires a lot of dedication, hard work, and a focused training routine. And one of the key elements of this routine is prioritizing these types of climbs, both in terms of frequency and intensity. So by training on overhung climbs first and most often, you're going to get used to the physical demand of these routes and improve your technique. And when it comes to technique and skill development, deep work is crucial. So deep work is a state of focus focus concentration where you eliminate distractions and immerse yourself in a challenging task. By prioritizing overhung climbing in this way, you can develop myelin, a substance that forms around your neurons when you engage in deep work, which is needed to improve your skills and reach new levels of performance. By developing more myelin, you're strengthening the neural connections that underlie your skills. Essentially, you're making it easier for you to complete certain skills or techniques without thinking as hard about it, doing things reflexively. So I'm putting together another video more specifically on myelin and skill development and how it pertains to rock climbing. But if you wanna learn more about that, you can check out this book, The Talent Code by Daniel Coy. It is a fantastic book all about skill development, specifically in a lot of general sports. I will put a link to that in the description below. But in other words, by dedicating most of your time to training overhung climbs, you're not only gonna have the strength and energy to improve your strength and endurance, but you're also going to better develop the neural pathways needed to perform at your best by getting in a high repetition of these climbs. Other exercises that I'm gonna get into can be helpful, but they should be thought of as accessory work as opposed to the priority. So the second tip is to train your core. Your core is undeniably one of the most important aspects of climbing, and it becomes even more crucial when you're facing overhung routes. As the angle of the wall increases, the force of gravity pulling against your body is only going to increase on your grip and your arms, and your core muscles are gonna to have to work that much harder in order to keep you on the wall. So this means that having a strong core can be the difference maker between sending a route and falling off. But why is it so important? Well, your core muscles help you stay close to the wall, reducing the amount of load that's gonna be pulling on your grip and your arms. When you're hanging from the wall by only your fingertips or your toes, your core muscles contract to keep your body in a straight line, preventing you from swinging away from the wall. They can also give you the power to pull your feet back if you do happen to cut loose. So it is crucial to train your core to get as strong as possible. Some of my favorite exercises for climbing that help most with overhang routes are the dragon flag and windshield wipers, which actually put you in positions similar to climbs where you have to use your core to recover from a foot slip or reach for a foot chip. By adding these exercises to your training routine, you're going to feel stronger and more comfortable making these types of movements while hanging upside down. And speaking of foot placements, third tip is going to be focusing on the specifics of your foot placement and learning the toe hook technique. So toe hooks are where a climber uses their toes to pull into holds, thereby relieving effort from the arms. This technique is particularly useful when climbing on overhung routes as it allows you to shift your weight into your toes, reducing the strain on your arms and allowing you to climb a little bit more efficiently. So this is certainly an extreme example, but watch the way that I use my toes to pull on the starting hold in order to keep my body close to the wall. With a toe hook, you're almost using your feet as you do with your hands and pulling your body into the wall. This is really helpful on overhung routes if you need an extra point of contact to pull you close as you move a hand or foot into better placement as I do in that previous example. But in addition to mastering the toe hook, you should also focus on the specifics of where you're placing your toes when you're actually moving them onto foot chips. Beginners will often just place their foot on footholds without thinking too much about what the foot is actually doing. And this can work fine on regular or slab walls, but once the angle of the wall starts to break 90, your feet can really become a burden on you if you start to do things this way. However, if you think about placing your feet as you would your hands, you can often get a bit of surface area in the hole that you can utilize for extra traction. You can see how you want to push down almost on the inside of the hold to move your knees and hips closer to the wall. Fourth and final tip is to get really strong at pull-ups. 
So being really good at pull-ups is obviously not essential for overhand climbing, but it can make things a lot easier. While high repetition, working on your core, and improving your foot technique is going to be really crucial and most important for beginners, pull-ups are a great accessory exercise that can help you develop the strength and endurance needed for the sport. Additionally, incorporating variations of pull-ups such as assisted pull-ups or weighted pull-ups can challenge your muscles in different ways. Assisted pull-ups are basically going to help you improve your endurance, while weighted work is going to help improve your strength and your power. To improve your pull-up game, you can also do things like work different grips, hand positions, or even work your grip strength through exercises such as hangboarding. If you are unsure about where to start with training pull-ups and improving your strength, you can check out this video right over here where I give a breakdown of how to train pull-ups and I even uh, try and give you a training plan at the end that you can follow. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or want some more specific advice on how to train specifically for climbing overhung and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks guys.